Hey guys, what's up? It's Katie and I'm back with another Marvel Contest of Champions video and today we are going to be looking at the champion spotlight for Airwalker. So thanks to the CCP, I had early access to this information. So thanks, kabam. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's take a look at the background about Airwalker. Gabriel Land was formerly a member of the Nova Corps before eagerly accepting an offer from the cosmic entity Galactus to become his herald, wielding the immense power, the immense power of the power cosmic and the bow of Gabriel Eric. Airwalker dutifully serves Galactus terraforming worlds for his master and crushing all who oppose him. So let's hope he will be a herald of Galactus and not, well, a dud of Galactus. So let's take a look at his mechanics. Um, Airwalker's core focus is building upon his Dark Tide debuffs on the opponent. These debuffs hamper the opponent's block proficiency and cause them to take damage while they're affected by an armor break. Airwalker applies both Dark Tide and armor breaks through special attacks and applies even more for each buff on him. Once enough Dark Tide is applied to the opponent, they are converted to a permanent passive, which also powers up Airwalker's other abilities. To aid Airwalker in all of this, he has a power cosmic buff, which grants him attack and power, and he gains an additional power cosmic every time he wins a fight so he's got some pretty decent um base stats right he's got as a five star he's got uh over 33k uh health he's got over almost 1800 attack and he's got decent prestige right 10 6 30 that's overall not not bad now he is of course going to be a cosmic champ so let's take a look at his strengths he's got power game so he gains power for each power cosmic buff. He starts the quest with one power cosmic and these act as persistent charges. So, and then they increase the potency of his power gain and effects when charging the heavy. So basically what you wanna do with him is you wanna charge your heavy to get that power gain and then launch your special and we'll go over that in a minute. So when fighting power control champs, he applies dark tide when affected by a power lock, power drain, or power burn effect. So when this guy is in the monthly event quest, we do not want to bring in any champ that is going to power lock, power drain, or power burn. So it seems like we're probably going to have to stick to our nullifying champs in order to get rid of that power cosmic. So that is actually one of his weaknesses as well is nullify. The number of dark tide debuffs relies on the number of buffs Airwalker has, dependent on power cosmic to gain power. So nullifying his buffs will reduce the number of dark tides he can apply, thus decreasing his power gain, which is what you want because this guy, he can kind of gain a decent amount of power from what it seems like on paper. Now, remember, this is all based on paper. I haven't had a chance to play around with him yet. No one actually has. So we won't truly know what he's capable of until we get his hands on him. And then he also has another weakness and that is debuff purification. So dark tides can be removed whenever an opponent gains a bar of power. So also, when you're fighting against him with champs like a power gain, you're going to be able to remove those dark tide debuffs pretty quickly. So champs like Hyper Hyperion, excuse me, who gain a lot of power is going to help you out there. Champs who can purify debuffs, so, you know, Killmonger, Hitmonkey, uh, there are others, Night Thrasher, anyone who can purify a debuff is going to help you out there as well. Now, 10 dark tide debuffs are then converted to a passive and cannot be removed or purified. So you don't want to get in a situation where you're fighting this guy where he converts it to a passive and I'll tell you that in a minute. So let's take a look at um, whoops, some of his abilities. Now his offensive po combat power rate is decreased by 40%, but that is countered by gaining power over time by the power cosmic. So again, we kind of talked about that and we'll get into it a little bit more. Now, if he is power drained, locked or burned, he inflicts three dark tides debuffs. So you definitely don't want to do that to this guy. Nullifying is gonna be the way to go. So, you know, you've got, uh, You've got Morningstar, you've got Doom. There are plenty of champs who can do it. Even I feel like if you're going to neutralize him with Tyra might be a way to go when you're going to fight against this guy in the event quest. So the power cosmic. So let's talk about this because this is uh, something, something to be talked about. So it's a persistent charge and you can get up to three of them. So you start the first fight with one and then each time you win a fight, you gain another one and you stop at three. Now the special three can only be used if he have has three power cosmics or if he's a defender. Now, 
I don't really know how I feel about this. Uh, only if he has three power cosmics or is defending. I think it should be one or the other. You shouldn't have a conglomeration of both, right? So he should only either have, he can only use a special three when he has three power cosmics or, you know, he can use a special three whenever. So I don't know, maybe it has something to do with how the special three is, which it, it looks kind of intriguing. So that could have something to do with it. Now he also gains three and a half percent of a bar of power every second. So he does have a pretty quick power gain with the power cosmic. And then he also increases his armor rating and attack with the power cosmic. Now let's take a look at these Dark Tide debuffs. Now the Dark Tide debuffs, when you place them on the opponent, you can stack up to a max of 10. And then once at 10, it's converted into a passive. So the Dark Tide debuffs reduce block proficiency during the opponent's specials and last indefinitely. So you wanna get these on quickly and then have them launch a special so that that um, reduced block proficiency lasts the entire fight. If both Armor Break and Dark Tide is applied because he does inflict an Armor Break as well, the opponent will take direct damage every 0.5 seconds equal to 2% of the opponent's base attack per dark tide. So this could, it's it's going to be base attack, not modified attack. So you guys kind of want to keep, you know, a, a, an eye on that so you don't get confused. But it would be interesting to use him in a quest and see how that kind of scales in, in, in areas like, um, you know, Act 6 or something like that. All right, so now let's take a look at this Dark Tide passive. So it is cross fight and you can bring it from one fight to the next at a, at a max of one. And it lasts for the rest of the fight and the next two fights. It counts as 10 Dark Tide debuffs and gains additional effects based on the opponent's class. Now, Airwalker's fourth light attack, excuse me, refreshes two armor breaks on the opponent. So that's, Kind of important because remember, you want to have the armor breaks and the dark tide side effects um, on the dark tide effects, excuse me, on the opponent when you're fighting with, with Airwalker and you want to keep those dark tide off of you when you're fighting against Airwalker. So he gains a variety of abilities after converting them from the, the, um, active to the passive, which we're going to talk about because it has a lot to do with kind of like his SIG ability and stuff. So since this is a crossfight ability, opponents need to be careful when you're fighting against him because you're not going to, when you're, when, when he's placed on defense, they can win the fight and still walk away with the dark tide passive applied to them. And that's going to transfer with what happens into the next fight based on what class you are. So kind of need to keep that in mind when you're fighting against him, if he is placed on defense. So, and since the dark tide passive actually counts as 10 dark tide, dark tide debuffs, Airwalker won't apply any more dark tide debuffs once the passive is in place. So it's going to be, get, he's going to get that passive on and then that's going to be it for the Dark Tide debuffs. All right, now let's take a look at these cross fight class effects because this is kind of where it's important. So if it's a tech champ, it's going to reduce the duration and potency of power drain, lock and burn effects by 70%. For mutants, it's going to reduce the offensive ability accuracy during specials by 33%. Skill is going to reduce the crit rating by a certain number. Science non-damaging debuffs have a minus 25% ability accuracy. So that's going to count towards champs like Void. Um, cosmic buff potency is reduced by 50%. The only thing that this isn't really going to go against is against Mystical because Mystical Energies resist a Dark Tide. So no additional effects, which makes sense, right? Because Mystic does have class advantage over Cosmic. All right, so now let's take a look at his heavy attacks because this is an important function in uh, kind of his play style. So it increases ability power rate by 300%. So you're definitely gonna wanna be charging a lot of heavies. 75% of any power gained while charging is lost over 0.75 seconds after the charge stops. He becomes unblockable for one second if Airwalker fills a bar of power and is paused during specials and he gains a fury buff, increasing an attack if the special attack is activated. So. He's definitely going to be a kind of charge heavy into special type play style, probably very similar to Cap Infinity War, um, although not entirely, maybe more towards like Sorcerer's, or excuse me, not Sorcerer, uh, Storm Pyramid X, how you want to hold the hold down the heavy and then immediately launch your special without letting go. So I kind of feel like it's going to be the same, similar play style. Now, 
he it might he might get nicked uh he does ha have the ability to hold the heavy for an extended period of time how long that is i don't know i don't know if it's something like tigra or if it's just kind of an extended period of time where you can charge the heavy so that's definitely going to be something that you need to play around with or we need to play around with to figure out how long he can actually charge his heavy now his special attacks um, they armor break the opponent and they also apply one dark tide debuff plus an additional one for each buff on Airwalker if the last hit isn't blocked. And this is kind of a thing that we need to keep in mind here. With Airwalker, you're gonna want to block hits. And this is why. So with the special one, the last hit has 50% chance to inflict a stun debuff for two seconds and is increased by 50% if Airwalker is unblockable. So you're going to need to watch that. So special attacks are really the main way here that Airwalker applies the Dark Tide debuff. So if you dodge a special, you're going to get hit with the Dark Tide. If you block a special, you're not going to get hit with that. So it's going to take some adjusting to to just block a special instead of trying to dex it, especially if it's something easy where there's no projectiles. Although I have a feeling this guy's going to going to throw some projectiles. I mean, he has the bow of Gabriel, right? So now speaking of um, bow of gabriel the special attack too if the opponent has a dark tide passive this attack deals an additional 40 percent of the damage dealt as burst energy damage so this is definitely going to be the attack that you're going to want to throw especially early on in the game when you don't have three power cosmics up so you're definitely want to get these special twos going um the bonus energy damage is relative to how much damage was dealt it'll benefit more though from the fury buff that airwalker triggers through his heavy charging and then the armor breaks that he can apply all right, now let's take a look at this special three since he can't technically throw a special three until he has the three power cosmic. So why is that? Well, it's kind of an interesting thing. Airwalker replaces the power cosmic with the power of Galactus buff for 20 seconds. Now the power of Galactus buff does various things. It increases his attack rating. He regenerates about 6% of his health. He gains 10.5% of a bar of power every second. He becomes passively unstoppable and each attack deals an additional burst of direct damage equal to 5% of the damage dealt per Dark Tide. And then the power of Galactus sets Airwalker's power to zero when it ends. So, this is this is going to be the one to throw once you get him built up. Now, the, like I said, this has kind of got a bunch of different effects, but it's the one you want to pay particular attention to is the power gain because it's equal to the amount of power gain he would gain from three power cosmic buffs. So the power of Galactus won't actually cause him to lose out on all the power he gets from charging a heavy attack. So, but I, I, he, he sounds like he's going to be kind of fun. So now let's take a look at his signature ability. So his signature ability is Herald of the Destroyer and he inflicts a Dark Tide debuff on the opponent every eight seconds. So he definitely to me seems like he needs the Awakened ability because this is allow him to convert it to a passive before an enemy can potentially get up to a full bar of power where they can drop them. So I feel like he does need to have his Awakened ability, and I feel like he's probably going to need to ha have a high signature ability as well. So we won't actually know until we get to kind of, you know, test him out and see how he is. So let's take a look at his synergies. Nova Core Veteran. So he's got one here with Nova where Airwalker, whenever a Dark Tide is applied, 30% chance to place an additional one. Nova reaching 75 Nova charges refreshes Nova Spheres even while at max stacks. So he, I kind of feel like he might need to have this synergy with Nova, but are you really gonna wanna bring Nova on your team? So I don't know, we'd have to wait and test that out, right? And then he's got the high ground with Green Goblin, Phoenix, and Ebony Ma. So heavy charging increases ability power rate by an additional 150, 150%, reduced by 50% for each power cosmic. So again, he, this seems like a synergy he's probably going to want to have, but are you going to want to bring Green Goblin, Phoenix, or Ebony Ma along? Probably not. So it's almost like a useless synergy. 
And then he's got the enemies where all champions uh, gain an increase in crit rate with all of the Fantastic Four members. Um, but that is it for the champion spotlight of Airwalker. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of Airwalker? Does he seem like he's going to be OP or does he seem like he's going to be another dud of Galactus? Only time will tell. We never really know how these champions are going to be on paper until we get our hands on them. Remember Cable? Yeah, I do. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's all that I got. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys liked what you saw and you want to see more, please remember to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and hit me up in the Discord chat. Thanks, guys. Bye.